All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you could join us this afternoon for a session on how to be community engaged at Penn, a guide for first year students, first year engineering students in particular. This is a conversation featuring this experience of several different Penn students, most of them at the School um, of Engineering. And the purpose of our session today is to give you a sense of some of the ways you might connect your academic work to service in the community and to highlight some of the Penn programs that provide opportunities, structure and support for you to do that. So we are recording the event to share it with others who are not able to be here today. So here is our plan for our time together. We're going to start with a very brief one to three minute introductions of our, the four programs that we're highlighting today. That's the SNF Padilla program, uh, Netter Center, Fox Leadership and Pours and Civic House. The bulk of our time will be dedicated to hearing directly from students. Um, we have several students, each of them will share for about three to five minutes about how they've engaged with these programs during their time at Penn, about why they've pursued opportunities to do community engaged work, and what they view as the benefits of doing this for themselves and for others. And then we'll have time at the question at the end for questions. So, I'll start with um, introducing you to the Padilla program. I'm Leah Anderson. I'm the executive director of the SNF Padilla program, which is a relatively new program at Penn. We've been around just over a year. The goal of the Padilla program is to integrate wellness, service, and citizenship through dialogue. So we cultivate um, through our programming opportunities for students to build the skills and the values uh, needed to engage in robust and meaningful dialogue across a whole range of differences. And our, our hope is that with um, improved skills in dialogue, this can be applied in um, our other pillars uh, to create opportunities for enhanced effective service to cultivate um, better citizenship and to improve our individual and community well being. We do this work through several different um, types of activities. So we have SNF Padilla designated courses, which we'll be talking about more today, and are a great opportunity for engineering students. We also have a public interest technology university network initiative that we sponsor. And this is especially um, applicable to engineering students. You can find out more about it on our website. In particular, you might be interested in the Pitt at Penn student group. These are students that are interested in thinking about how technology and knowledge about technology um, is is important to and needs to be present in processes like developing public policy or the law. And so a public interest uh, focused technology. So Pitt at Penn is a student group you might want to check, check out. And then we also promote events uh, that promote dialogue across diverse perspectives by sponsoring and co-sponsoring a range of speakers and panels and once we're back in person, other types of activities too. We um, later at the end of the presentation, we'll have a slide where you can find our website, but we encourage you to engage with our program in any way that makes sense. And we're always happy to answer questions. I'll hand it now to my colleague, Anna from the Netter Center for Community Partnerships. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna, and I work at the Netter Center for Community Partnerships. The Netter Center is one of Penn's primary vehicles for advancing civic and community engagement at Penn and engaging Penn's resources, including and especially our students, with the local community through long-term mutually beneficial partnerships that are focused on local, place-based, collaborative problem solving. Through the Netter Center, Penn students can work with the local public schools, communities of faith, and other community organizations to help solve critical real-world campus and community problems in West Philadelphia and Philadelphia at large, and do so in a way that contributes to the quality of life and the quality of learning for everyone. One core pathway to get involved with the Netter Center is through taking academically-based community service, abbreviated as ABCS courses. 
in academically based community service. Um, teaching, research, and learning are integrated with real world service and reflection, meaning that you get to apply your learning through a collaborative real world problem solving experience with the community. There are more than 70 ABCS courses every year that are offered across all four undergraduate schools. And with the Penn student support, we are actively engaged in creating more ABCS course opportunities in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences that are oriented towards problem solving and engineering design. If we wanna go to the next slide, we'll see that students can also engage during the academic year, um, as well as during the summer through community service work study, academic internships, and volunteer opportunities. And there are 15 to 20 different programs we have focused on all types of diverse local needs, often related to social justice, including STEM education, college access, um, environmental justice, program and data evaluation, and statistical analysis, entrepreneurship, um, and many more. Most of our programs partner with the local public K-12 schools in West Philly that are called University Assisted Community Schools. And a community schools means that these are hubs that not only serve the students' educational, but also their physical and emotional health, their recreational and other social service needs. And not only those of the students, but also their families, their staff, and the communities that are surrounding the school. University assisted community schools means that Penn and students like you are the primary partners that make this possible. So all information to get involved with the Netter Center can be found on our website on the Get Involved tab. Um, you can sign up for our bi-weekly student newsletters. And please feel free to contact us at any of these emails to talk about getting involved. Um, now I'm going to hand it off to Andrew to introduce Fox Leadership and Course. Great, thanks so much, Anna. So I'm Andrew Arrange, I'm the Director of Operations for two programs on campus, the Fox Leadership Program, as well as the Penn Program on Opinion Research and Election Study Studies, which is a, a, the PORS acronym. And so uh, Fox is kind of an undergraduate research or undergraduate leadership program uh, uh, on campus. And we work with students across all four undergraduate schools, including engineering. And we really kind of center our work um, in these kind of three main goals and kind of lessons of leadership in life that were articulated and modeled by our benefactor, um, Robert A. Fox, uh, which includes finding your passion, uh, putting people first and succeeding the right way. And so the main program that we currently um, sponsor uh, on campus is this fellowship program where we place undergraduate students and also recent Penn alumni with innovative nonprofit organizations and public sector organizations here in Philadelphia, but also nationally. And so every summer we sponsor uh, fellowships with all of the organizations that you see on the screen. Um, during the school year, we also sponsor a number of, of fellowships through the Fox Leadership Program with a handful of these and, I'm working, and are currently working to, to build out new partnerships as well. And so this list will probably grow over the course of your, your, your three more years here on campus. Um, the fellowships kind of fall into two different categories. They're national and local. Some are more focused in research areas, right? So if you end up working with Brookings or Child USA, which looks at uh, child abuse issues, those are more uh, research research oriented. We also do service uh, fellowships with the National Urban League, an organization called Girls Incorporated, which does child uh, empowerment, as well as with a number of organizations that are focused on the issue of hunger and food insecurity here in um, Philadelphia. Um, and then the PORS program is a separate program, but we also sponsor fellowships with PORS. Um, it, as I mentioned before, it's the Penn Program on Opinion Research and Election Studies. It's basically the quantitative hub within the political science department that's combining data science skills with political science skills. So if you're interested in, for example, public opinion, if you're interested in election administration issues, if you're interested in, for example, how the media is able to project elections on election night, that's all of the work that we do through PORS and we hire students um, into one-on-one re uh, -on -one research opportunities uh, every, every semester, including over the summer, to work with a number of faculty members that we, that we work with directly. And I know both uh, Joelle and Charlie, who are two students that I've been involved with, both Fox and PORS, are gonna be able to share more about their experiences with both programs. Um, and now I wanna pass it off to, to my colleague, David, who will be able to talk a little bit more about Civic House. Okay. Thanks very much, Andrew. Um, so uh, Civic House, we have a photo there purposefully because we're in a nice uh, small house uh, on at 3914 Locust Walk. We're very much looking forward to being back there uh, in the fall. Uh, it's, it, for those of you who don't know, it's amidst the high rises, um, again, on Locust Walk between 39th and 40th Streets. And I mentioned, I show the house in part two because 
it is a locus of activity for our programming. And I'll speak to the programming in a moment, but uh, I think it's also important to note that much of the activity that happens there uh, encourages a community of students. And we've seen students from different activities and programs who might not have ordinarily intersected with one another meeting there and new programs coming from that. Uh, also, Civic House was founded by students who proposed it to the then president of the university in 1998, I think further demonstrating the agency that students have at Penn to launch and uh, get involved in programs that they've seen a need for um, after their involvement in a variety of activities at Penn. Uh, we go to the next slide, please, Lisa. Uh, so uh, Civic House, uh, this is our vision statement. The Civic House will support Penn students in responsible community engagement and inspire them to learn, serve, I know you can read this, as lifelong thoughtful citizens and advocates for social change. Um, I mentioned that because uh, too, it's, it helps to ground a lot of our work in terms of what it is we're trying to help students to gain as well as our community partners. A lot of our work is driven by uh, what is called the social justice framework that we've developed. And it looks at, among other things, helping students to explore the root causes of social issues, uh, to think about praxis, uh, uh, um, that's to say practicing, and then reflecting upon their work toward better practice in the end, towards centering our community partners so that those mutually beneficial collaborations that uh, our other folks have spoken to can really sustain themselves. Uh, we're not just there to do good or to uh, bring whatever resources we have to at the university to our community partners. Well, that's part of it. It's really to work with them in partnership and to look at the assets um, and histories that they bring to the work as well. Uh, it expresses itself in a variety of ways, that framework, and through a number of programs. I don't know if uh, that's on the next slide or not. Thank you very much. Um, and so these are core programs that we have. And I should say, just speaking to students at the engineering school, engineers have been involved in all of these um, over time and continue to be not only in, as general participants, but also being able to use the, your particular training and interests in some of these opportunities. A couple of particular notes uh, are the West Philadelphia Tutoring Project, where there are chances for students to use their STEM skills in working with students across the district and uh, in our other community partners. The Community Engagement Program and Community Engagement Internship Programs, where there are particular placements for students to bring, uh, again, st STEM specific skills, depending upon our partners' needs, um, and the Penn Alternative Breaks Program. And lastly, the bottom bullet there that we have numerous workshops and discussions uh, that involve various constituents of our work to help folks learn more about what they're doing. And sometimes students have been involved in our programs, we'll populate those. So uh, again, we've had students from the School of Engineering and Applied Science involved in our programs throughout, including students who helped to propose and found Civic House. And we look forward to folks joining us in the future. Um, and you can contact us through the website that we'll be offering at the end. Um, I'm now happy to pass it on to Tom Stachin, who is one of our civic scholars and very involved in Civic House, as well as some other programs, uh, to talk about some of his experiences. Tom. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Tom. I'm a sophomore studying um, bioengineering um, and also maybe urban studies, if I can fit it in. <laughs> um, so I'm a, like David said, I'm a civic scholar, so I'll be talking a little bit more about Civic House and kind of my experiences there. Um, it's it's been really fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I think, like David said, uh, one of the main things that I appreciated about it was kind of the focus on sort of praxis and building those long-term relationships with the community. Um, a lot of times I think it can be a challenge in sort of um, uh, colleges and universities because of kind of the turnover of students to kind of build those longitudinal and kind of mutually supportive uh, relationships. Um, but it's really kind of acts as a hub uh, that kind of connects you to all those things in really, really meaningful ways. So one of the things that I've done is I worked with um, Highest Pennsylvania, uh, which was, a, which is a um, a uh, uh, agency that uh, is contracted with the federal government to kind of help um, recent uh, asylees and refugees uh, who were recently placed in Philadelphia uh, to kind of acclimate and get job training, find jobs. Um, and that was a, was a really enjoyable experience. I know I think they're looking for um, uh, an intern this summer who's, who's going to be working on kind of helping with technology access and accessibility um, in, uh, in, and connecting people to that uh, to help them, especially as we kind of navigate the pandemic. 
Um, and so, so that's a really cool opportunity that might, might, might interest um, engineers. Um, but yeah, so I definitely emphasize sort of um, the praxis element of it and, and, and kind of appreciating uh, working through that sort of lens um, and, and everything that I've done with them. Um, and yeah, so I'll pass it off to Joel. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Joel Gross and I'm a senior from New Jersey. I'm in the college, I'm studying PPE. And like Andrew mentioned, I worked with both PORS and the Fox Leadership Fellowships over my last two summers. Um, the Fox Leadership, the Fox Fellowship that I had connected me to a nonprofit organization in the Philly area called Girls Inc., which is an organization that serves girls age five through 18 and provides them with meaningful programming and educational opportunities for ways that they can help navigate, you know, social, economic, and gender, you know, barriers that they may um, experience. And I had two jobs during that fellowship. I was, you know, creating vert and executing virtual programming um, for elementary and middle school age students. And I was creating like STEM and literacy activities. And then I was going on Zoom and, 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 and engaging in those activities with the girls. And then I also worked on a civic engagement summit, planning that for around the time of the election, which is really exciting. And so I was helping to create programming that would teach the girls how to be civically engaged themselves and learn about voting and advocacy and other ways that they can be empowered to enact change in their community. So ultimately I was being in civic engaged and then I was sort of teaching others and how to do that themselves in their own communities. Um, and then as Andrew also mentioned, I worked with PORS the previous summer and through PORS I was I worked with a member of the political science fact, faculty, Dr. Stephen Pettigrew, and I worked to help clean election return data in R and create a repository of data that he would use on the NBC decision desk on election night. And then this past November, I actually helped you know, assist with the decision desk, which was a really, really exciting experience. And so ultimately I had two really very different experiences, both with, you know, pores and with Fox and they were both really, really great. I would say that pores helped me to develop that love of elections that I had. And through Fox, I was actually able to apply that passion and help and educate others, um, particularly with this election focused civic engagement summit that I helped to organize. And so what I basically took away from these experiences is that combining your passion with service is a really great way to, you know, grow your own interests, but also help others, you know, develop their own passions. And so mine is just like one of the many experiences you can have with Pores and Fox. They're all so different. So I'll pass it up off to Charlie, who can talk a little bit about his experiences with Fox and Pores. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so as she mentioned, uh, my name is Charlie. Uh, I'm also a freshman, um, but I, I found it's really important to get involved um, for me with the community um, because I, I don't think we should just see ourselves as people who happen to be in Philadelphia for a few months, for a few years. I think we should see ourselves as like full members of the community and people who um, are, are engaging with that fully. Uh, we shouldn't just be in like this pen bubble. Um, so that's why I'm really appreciative uh, of the work that I have been able to do. So um, uh, on the Fox side, I have a fellowship. I've been doing it for the year um, with the Share Food Program. Um, and that is uh, an organization. It's a food bank uh, that helps provide food to uh, local food pantries across Philadelphia. Uh, and I really appreciate that work because um, I, I kind of split it up in two ways of what I do. Um, there's the side where uh, I work and get to work with directly with community people, uh, calling people and check in like, hey, is it okay if we uh, bring in this shipment on Thursday or something, um, or helping sign them up for new programs, uh, sort of general things. And then there's a whole side of it where I get to apply my passions and what I care about and really develop those skills. So when I started working with them, I said like, hey, you know, I, I'd really like to work more with data um, and uh, looking at your, uh, your guys' processes that way. Um, so they've set me up with a lot of uh, different data analysis uh, uh, jobs. Um, so right now, right now, for example, I'm going through uh, and looking through uh, all their like weights. They have like a, a record of how how much each like shipment of food weighed, and then like how many shipments were included in it, and then how many households the sites like reported that they served. So I'm going through and I put all that data into R, and I'm running analysis right now to find uh, exactly how much does uh, like about one pound of food. Uh, how much does that serve like for a household um, so you can get better numbers and better reporting for that uh, way. There's also that and just like uh, talking to normal everyday people, uh, everyday Philadelphians who uh, are worried about their food um, and then helping them out 
uh, it is really great. And then uh, <laughs> it's nice when uh, I'm looking, I'm just kind of looking around the city, looking at Google Maps, and I go, hey, I, I've heard of that community. I, I uh, interacted with someone from a church over there. Um, it gives you a lot more appreciation for uh, being here and being in Philadelphia. Uh, I also work uh, with pores. Um, right now, this semester, I've been doing uh, research with uh, Dr. Um, uh, Pettigrew, uh, and he uh, has had uh, a lot of great uh, help. Uh, we've been working on 2020 election results. So I've been going through like every single state uh, and pulling out the uh, results, pulling out um, whatever sort of data they have formed in, and then trying to get it condensed to one uh, uniform thing throughout the entire United States um, for each, like as specific of data as we can. So we've been going to precincts, counties, and of course the statewide. Um, but it's been uh, really, really interesting, right? And it uh, has been in me with uh, new challenges. And it's, it's different from like a school assignment, right? Where you're trying to get a specific outcome. Uh, there's a lot of different paths uh, to getting what we're trying to find. Um, so I, I really appreciate kind of the creativity or, or different thinking that it takes. Um, and we get, you get a lot of support from uh, the professor or the organization that you work with. And uh, so either Dr. Pettigrew or Cher. Um, so it's, it's really been great. Uh, yeah, so. I've really enjoyed my experience. Oh, I also want to mention that I am involved with the uh, Civic House Pen Alternative Breaks program, and I would highly recommend that as well. Um, but I will pass it off to Katie. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie, and I just graduated in December um, with a degree in bioengineering, um, and I've submatriculated into a master's degree in statistics and research design in the Graduate School of Education. Um, and I have been involved with the Netter Center since sophomore year, so four years now since I just graduated. Um, and it is by far the most meaningful thing I did on campus and the thing I treasure most from my time at Penn. Um, and I was involved in a ton of different programs at Netter. It sort of like sucks you in and there's always more ways to get involved. But um, the specific programs I was involved in are the Penn Reading Initiative, which um, is tutoring kids on reading, um, the Penn program for public service, where I, which is a summer internship where I worked with um, eighth graders, helping them sort of in a dual, like a two pronged manner, one, navigate the high school application props process to make that more equitable. And then also on career, sort of thinking about what future careers they might like. And then the bulk of my time has been spent with the Netter Center data and evaluation team, which sort of asked the question like, one, how are we measuring what we care about? And two, how are we measuring what we care about accurately and making sure that the data that we collect is, is truthful to what is happening. Um, and that's really important for guiding our mission, also really important for things like funding, which is always important. Um, and then that work has transitioned into teaching um, and co-researching with a group of high schoolers through Youth Participatory Action Research Project on collecting data on mental health in West Philadelphia um, during the pandemic. And that's challenging from a sort of like statistics um, point of view, like how do you even do that? Um, so it's been great to work with a group of eight high school students on that project intensively over the last semester. Um, but even more than how meaningful these things have been, and that is the primary takeaway for me, I wanted to talk specifically about how they've intersected with engineering because um, the overlap is really large and it's not talked about enough. I feel like a lot of times when I go to these events, they talk about how meaningful it is and it is, but it's also has really shaped my viewpoint as an engineer. So the first thing I wanted to bring up is how problem solving is sort of at the heart of engineering and at the heart of the types of community service that at least the Netter Center engages in and I bet the other programs represented here. And being an engineer has made me better at problem solving and community service and my experience in problem solving and community service has made me a better engineer and has definitely given me a leg up on sort of the senior design type, like the courses you get to in third and fourth year engineering that are all design based. Um, so I feel like the Netter Center benefited by having my perspective as an engineer and my classmates benefited from the stuff, the types of problem solving that Netter taught me to do and inform my thinking on. The second thing I wanted to mention was that there's a misconception that the skills that you're taught in STEM classes aren't exactly what's needed in community service, but that is such a misconception, whether you're in CIS, so like coding, website design, or your, you know, the math and stat that we get in data and evaluation and measuring, um, to even just the STEM skills, like as are taught in high school, like you don't need to learn a whole new skill set. The skill set you arrive with is really, really valuable um, and you can 
practice those skills through community service. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention is just how, and the most important thing engineering wise that I've gotten out of my community service is sort of a really big appreciation for the context that lies behind objective data. We're often given like a spreadsheet of numbers, but that isn't just a number or that isn't just a confidence interval. There's a whole world that informs those numbers and how they came to be and what they might mean. And ultimately the solutions we design as engineers will never be successful if we don't have that context in the back of, in the back of our minds. And so I've really appreciated how my community service has informed that contextualization and informed the ways that I think about my solutions outside of the numbers. Um, and I think that will make my engineering solutions more successful, um, which is always the goal. So the last thing I wanted to say is just that um, if you don't see the opportunity, the specific opportunity you envision or the problem you wanna solve here, speak up these, um, especially at the Netter Center, there's a ton of resources, particularly towards developing ABCS classes. And if you, get in contact with me or Anna Balfons or just email the Netter Center. Um, I think they're always interested in sort of looking at how engineering and problem solving thinking and design intersect with um, community service. So if you have an idea that you didn't hear mentioned here, like speak up, reach out. Um, I think there's gonna be a place for that idea somewhere on campus. So thank you. And I'm gonna pass it to Catherine. Um. Okay, hey guys, everyone. So my name is Catherine. I'm a sophomore. I'm studying bioengineering and management, and um, I'm a fellow in the SNF PIDIA program. So I'll just talk to you all about some of my experiences with that. So yeah, so um, I really enjoyed the PIDIA program so far. And so I'm like one of those people that has like various interests, like, yes, I'm really interested in STEM and like engineering, but like, I've also always been really interested in like the humanities, like philosophy and history and such and such. And I feel like when you're an engineering student, you don't really get the opportunity to take many of those classes just because you have really strict, strict course load, course schedule to follow. So I was really excited to join the PIDEA program just so I could have opportunity to explore those things more, more deeply. And um, another thing I really enjoyed about the PIDEA program was like the focus on dialogue and um, civil discourse and, and communication, especially because like 2020, which was when I started with the PA program was really tumultuous year. And it was really great to be able to come together with like uh, 20, I think there were 20 of us, like 20 total students and, and talk about like tough issues and talk about our opinions and, and really like grow together and learn together. And I feel like my communication skills um, have improved a lot. And I feel like I'm, I've gotten a lot better at like seeing from the other perspective. And so, yeah, it's really great program just to improve. The, the pillars of the paper program, I think are really valuable to, to my real life experiences, like the service and wellness and, and dialogue. I feel like even if you're not in the program, if you if you take some of the classes, like you'll, you'll really get some benefit like to your personal growth. So um, the, besides being a PIA fellow, there's also lots of PIDEA designated classes that are open to everyone. Um, I'm, I'm in one right now, which is uh, taught by Dr. Zeke Emanuel, and we're like studying the life of Ben Franklin and studying, but it's not just a history course, we're like studying like the ethics of Franklin's life, and it's a really great class, and um, there's lots of other interesting PIDEA classes that are going to be um, um, open in the fall if anyone is still interested. So um, I'm sure Dr. Anderson has a more exhaustive list if you're interested, but, and um, also with the PIDEA program, I've gotten the opportunity to like take my interests and sort of like implement them in real life. So me and another fellow this semester are working on creating a um, pre-med wellness workshop for the undergrads. Wellness is also one of the PIDEA um, pillars and um, we think it would be a really great opportunity. and. I've also been able to integrate the PIDEA values into like my own research and stuff that I do like outside of school. Like um, I'm really interested in like computer science, machine learning. I was doing research studying like machine learning in um, radiology. And I, uh, when I took the PIDEA program, the first PIDEA class last semester, I started learning more about ethics and realizing like all the ethical implications in AI. And so you really get to see the things you're interested in from many different perspectives. And you just, 
as like the motto of the program is like education of the whole person and learning how to communicate. And I've really enjoyed my time there. And I think if any of you are interested in dialogue or service or any such thing, you should check out a video course. Great, thank you to all the students. Um, wonderful descriptions of the work that you're engaged in. Um, and I'm feeling very inspired uh, to hear what you've been up to. So we appreciate that. Um, at this point, I wanted to um, open it up to see if there were any questions from any of the participants who are with us today. Uh, you can either unmute your microphone and just ask your question, or you can also post it in the chat if you would like to. So I'll give you um, a minute to ask any question that might be on your mind. I should also, I can also invite the staff and the students who presented. If you have questions for each other, um, we can also take those now too. So I have a question to any of the students that would be, you know, would like to answer. Um, you know, there's a lot on your plate as a student at Penn. And Katie, I appreciate the, the, the ways you articulated some of the benefits um, uh, the, of this kind of work, not just for the community, but for yourself and your work. Um, I'm interested to hear, you know, how, from different students, how has this type of engagement, you know, what makes it worth it, given all of the academic demands and the many other opportunities you have at Penn would have been the benefits for you or what makes it worth it to make the time for it. Well, um, I can start out. I've been thinking about this a lot because uh, I graduated as class of 2020. And so all my peers have like been making and I have been making our onward decisions. and. So many of my classmates have moved out of Philly and it was really striking to me how much my community service has mattered because I cannot imagine leaving right now. Like my home is here, my family, like not my literal family, but people who are like family to me now are here. And so watching all my classmates just like go all over the, you know, like, you know, like have spread out all across the country after graduation and really recognizing the benefit that those connections and those ties and the people I've met through community service um, has given me and like how lucky I feel to feel grounded here and feel like I have a home here and feel like I have something so valuable here that I don't want to give it up, even for the cool careers that are, you know, in the Bay Area in Seattle, like how like it's just such a privilege. Um, and so like the people you meet and like the, like the people I've met through community service are the ones who are I'm still in contact with and who care about my well being and who like have made who have softened all the hard parts of Penn. So um, that's been yeah, that's just one perspective. Um, it's been on my mind a lot. I feel so lucky to have been involved in community service. Thank you, Katie. Does anybody else want to answer that one? Yeah, I just add on, I, I liked uh, what Katie said at the end there, it kind of softens the hard parts of Penn, because um, it is definitely kind of a change of pace often from sort of um, the really kind of rigorous classes. And um, it's kind of, you're able to kind of often kind of talk to people a lot, kind of, uh, and also like Katie said before, sort of see kind of the context behind a lot of the work that you're doing and kind of really um, put it into um, a real life uh, scenario and so it's really kind of I see it as kind of like a wellness thing it, it's a stress reliever to kind of be able to go and and do um, that kind of work for a little bit in, in your week it really I found it really um really stress stress relieving and a good thing for for my personal well-being Leah, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in with a question for the for the students. I'd be curious, and jo Joel, I, I know your answer to this, but I'm curious to hear other students of, of how your experiences have impacted or changed, right? Your or, uh, or evolved, right? Your plans for yourself post pen 
And if, if it's helped to like lay the groundwork for something new or kind of change the way that you've interpreted or, or, or kind of the plans that you're hoping to make for yourself after you leave the Penn community. I guess I'll talk a little bit. I know Andrew mentioned me briefly, but I through I think pores has just really changed my whole perspective on on so many different things. And I sort of went into it not thinking I liked elections or data or anything related to that. Like I was just like, oh, I don't feel qualified for this at all. I'm just gonna put an application in there and see what happens. And then they they took a chance on me, which was crazy, which I would recommend. Any of these things that you don't feel like you might be qualified for, you should always put yourself out there because you probably are and, and you're capable of doing so much more than you think. Well, that's what I learned from it. And I didn't know, you know, I wanted to do or I was interested in research or I was interested in elections at all. And now I'm actually continuing that after college, I'm going to continue doing elections related research, which is exciting. And I think something I took away from just the Fox leadership fellowship that I had was that, I don't know, I always want to make sure civic engagement is a part of my life or whether it's a part of my career or part of my extracurricular life hopefully can be incorporated in my career I think ideally um, because I like everyone was saying I think it's it's just necessary to to your well-being and to making those connections that are truly so much more so so deep and and wonderful and um I also want to answer. I know. I know that. I think every uh, the other three students are sophomores and freshmen, so they might still be like on the younger side for this question. Um, but most directly, um, I have. I'm in a graduate program, but I'm doing that part time, and I'm employed full time at the Netter Center. So it has become my employment, <laughs> um, which is like a direct consequence of the work I did as an undergrad, which is sort of cool because a lot of the pen clubs like this work is so real and it's like so has consequences and it has consequences that can lead to a full-time job that has health insurance and like a retirement plan and that's still sort of mind-blowing to me um but more broadly like stepping back I wanted to be a researcher coming in and I still want to be a researcher coming out but I think my community service work has totally changed like one, the questions I'm likely to pose, and two, like how I go about thinking about how we answer questions. And so like that has been a really cool perspective shift. And the things I've seen in my community service, uh, service work at Penn have been not represented in my educational, even though like bioengineering prepares you in other ways for a research career, like literature reviews and stuff. The, like the, the other ways to ask and answer questions aren't something that was taught as much in my curriculum as it stated you know my 40 like credit curriculum so I've really appreciated that education through my service work. Um, Andrew's question and uh, your answers Joelle Katie reminded me too of a I guess a potential if I could say shorter term like before career um, impact it may have had and I'd be interested to hear any of the students thoughts on, and some of you had this in some of your answers, but more directly, how have your experiences, if at all, uh, helped you to think about your, your place in the world, how you relate to community members, how you see yourselves as citizens um, in ways that you may or may not have predicted before? Yeah, so um, with me working with food, um, that it, it really, gives you a sense of kind of the, the everyday life that, that people go through, right? Um, you know, I've, I've lived in a household, I've been lucky enough that I haven't had to worry about food or am I gonna get, am I gonna be able to, to get um, what I need for this week? Um, but you, I, I've dealt with people who aren't sure about that, people who have a lot of friends and family in their community that, who aren't sure about that. Um, it gives you a lot more compassion for the, those types of struggles. Um, it lets you see that, that these things are tangible. They exist. Um, they need to be uh, dealt with. Um, and it feels really good when you're able to help people uh, out with those problems um, and help uh, make sure that uh, at least for this week, at least for this month, um, they are going to be able to 
uh, have that knowledge that, yeah, I am, I am going to be able to eat. Um, so that's, that, that's fulfilling for me. It makes me feel good. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's been really good for helping to really contextualize the issues that we see. Hi, so I'll ask a question. Um, I'm an academic counselor at PennCap, and Charlie, I was just curious. You had mentioned that you're a freshman. How did you come to know about these spaces? I know that you know with COVID happening, a lot of our freshman students don't know so much. They know some. Um, I like to tell them there's a thing called Zoom fatigue, but there's also email fatigue. So how did you come to choose to engage in these spaces? And, um, you know, and maybe this is a question for other students here. Have you communicated your involvement in these spaces to your peers? Like, are you also telling them what your experience is like? So if you can answer or speak to that, that would be great. Yeah, uh, I think I got incredibly lucky um, with having a wonderful class last semester, um, Political Science 107. Uh, the teaching staff were just just excellent. It was that uh, Dr. Tressler and Dr. Pettigrew that I mentioned. Um, they actually set up like a class Slack channel. Um, so that's where I, they posted about that opportunity. Um, I found it and uh, I just went for it. Um, again, I encourage you to go for it, anything that seems interesting. Um, but yeah, so I, I think I got lucky about finding out, out about that. It wasn't too much of like, I actively sought it out. Um, but I think it's it's something you should kind of keep an eye out for. Or I've heard a lot of friends uh, with like TAs and stuff or, or different opportunities. They just kind of like ask their professor like, hey, uh, do, you, do you know about anything? Or is there anything that you think, any programs that I could apply for? Um, and I've heard a lot of success out of that of just, just asking your professors because they are a lot more knowledgeable. They've been around a lot longer than we have, obviously. So. Well, wonderful. I th thank you to all of the students and the staff who've participated um, today and for sharing your experiences and your insights and suggestions uh, for other students who maybe like you are thinking, how do I find meaningful ways to connect with the community during my time at Penn? Um, I think you've given them a real sense of, of ways they might do that why they might do that um, and where that might lead them um, in, uh, in down some unexpected paths. So we have one final slide that we can share now that has the um, all of our programs listed and then the website and social media handles for the different organizations. We encourage you to explore these different opportunities um, to find out a particular um, program or initiative or course that might work for you. Um, and always feel free to reach out to us. Um, to The staff are always happy to um, talk with you, to field your questions, and to try to help you find the right fit um, with what you're interested in doing. Our different programs, uh, we collaborate, and so we can also sort of send you between uh, the different entities uh, if we think the, another place is a good match for you or has an opportunity that fits your interest and skill set. So with that, I just want to thank you for joining us today. I'd like to thank all of our student participants for sharing their experience and the staff um, from all of the different programs here at Penn that are committed to developing um, and cultivating opportunities for, for students that want to be community engaged while they're students and beyond. So um, we thank you for your time and look forward to being in touch with you in the future.